all of this in the aftermath of President Trump's reaction to Charlottesville, that's uh, become something of a distraction, certainly for Congress. And we're asking the question, will it distract the agenda? To The Daily Beast reporter Betsy Woodruff we go, as well as GOP bundler John Tatum and conservative commentator Gina Loudon. Good to see you all. Thank you so much for joining us. So what do you think, Gina? It, it, a lot of noise happening. Um, Gary Cohn says he's staying. That's good. That means he's still working on tax reform. But are they going to be able to get these big legislative victories in the face of all of this? Well, I, I mean, the question might be, how much have they accomplished so far? I mean, this president has accomplished so much, it's almost, it's almost astonishing how much he's accomplished completely without Congress. And so uh, when you look at it like that, you think, gosh, you know, they could be riding this wave of higher consumer confidence and the things the markets have done, rather than some of, some of them breaking from their ranks or whatever to stop and criticize the president who's managed to accomplish all of this without them. And so it's rather unfortunate that, uh, that they're not just banned together and, and riding this economic wave that could be could prove successful for them as well. Now you are on the uh, committee for the president's 2020 campaign, correct Gina? Media advisory board, yes. The advisory board. What are you doing in terms of uh, getting the president reelected in the face of all of this uh, criticism that's out there? <clears throat> Right. Well, it would be nice if when leftist spiteful attacks come for our president that our uh, Congress and, and senators especially would mm -hmm. stick in there and, and not, not, dis, not dissent from the ranks. Um, you know, this is something that Republicans have traditionally done. But, you know, you look back, Maria, you know, on health care, how long they had to get health care done. Yeah. The president had 200 days. They wanted to put the blame on him. Tax reform, all of a sudden now, they don't want to do tax reform because there was a leftist attack. Another one just just like Russiagate before. Uh, you know, look at the success of the president this week in North Korea. That has barely been mentioned. And they should be out there messaging that right now so that right. they can move forward with this economic well, agenda. Well, I think you make a really good point, Gina. The fact is, Betsy Woodruff, is that North Korea's maniac leader, Kim Jong-un, is backing down. The president's tough talk apparently is working. This is an enormous story. North Korea was set to, to strike Guam, and now we see that he's backing down because of the president and his tough talk. And yet no one's talking about that enormous story because we're all focused on what's happening in terms of disruption. I think an important piece of context when it comes to the activity that North Korea's leader has taken is that he has threatened to strike Guam multiple times over previous years and hasn't followed through on those threats. It's important not to read too much into his comments. That said, of course, it's a bit surprising that the White House isn't being more vocal about the change that's happened here and what at least at least this past week has shifted. Remember, an important piece of context as well is the fact that one of the president's senior advisors, Steve Bannon, gave kind of an eye-popping interview to a progressive magazine where he talked about a number of potential strategies the administration is considering or might consider as far as security issues on the Korean Peninsula. So it's something where we don't see a lot of unity within the White House, and I think that's why the North Korean issue hasn't necessarily generated as much applause for the president as you might have expected under different circumstances. Yeah, I think you make a good point. John Tatum, you're a GOP bundler. You, you've been real successful. I mean, when you look at the money that the GOP has been able to raise this year going into the 2018 elections, if they don't get tax reform done, does that goodwill go away? Maria, absolutely. Uh, I, it's interesting because I don't know why they're on vacation right now. They haven't accomplished anything. We were promised uh, tax reform by August. We haven't gotten it. Uh, they haven't done anything about health care, but yet they're on an extended vacation and they're already calling to, you know, line up fundraising events and things like that. And I can tell you uh, from firsthand experience, I was in uh, Northern Virginia. Uh, at the Redskins training camp, and I spoke with a very high-level Republican donor, and uh, and he's furious with uh, with their lack of uh, of progress and their lack of success. So I can tell you, if they don't start putting some wins on the board, they're not going to receive the funds as they go into these primaries and and the 2018 election yeah, cycle. Yeah, so you make a really People good point, are, John. So so let's talk about that for a second, John, because the present is in place. We know for four years. Uh, the Congress, the House, they're all up next year in 2018. They're very well could be jeopardy if they don't get this done. 
uh, and the Democrats may be running the House. Does the president have a better time or an easier time getting policy through with Democratic leadership? Well, that's a that's a tough question, Maria. I I don't know. I think that uh, at a certain point he's going to have to, you know, pair up or force a pairing of a Republican leader and a Democratic leader and find common ground that they can go off and work together on. Um, you know, they're coming back after this break and we're going to be looking at a debt ceiling. And the sure bet in Las Vegas is they're going to raise the debt ceiling, okay? And we all know that because it's not their money. So they're all going to vote to raise the debt ceiling and continue to expand the credit limit of, of all of us, the taxpayers. But there has to be some common ground that the president can reach out to a Republican senator and a Democratic senator and say, I want you guys to focus on taxes. I want you to go focus on health care. And, um, and I don't know. I can tell you, though, next year, in 2018, there's a number of governorships that are up. Yeah. Uh, uh, and, and that's going to affect redistricting and, and, and so forth. And, and I don't think any of these incumbents, if you've been in this Congress or Senate for two years, you're X the problem. If you've been there for 10 years, you're 5X the problem. And for those that have been there 20 and 30 years, you are 10 and, and 15 times the problem of what is not happening. Yeah, so what was I hope they're all get a wake-up call. That there's, there's the drain the swamp right there that the president has been <laughs> We're not draining about. it. Yeah, you're not draining we, it. That's we, true. We, it, we need to start draining it in 2018.